Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer Today for February 10th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is... Not working. Today is... All the news that's fit to print today. Children's Hospice Day. Feast of St. Paul's Shipwreck. International Cribbage Day. International Winter Bike to Work Day, and National Cream Cheese Brownie Day. Go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will, shall proclaim your praise. You created the day and the night, O God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You made summer and winter. Our reading for today is from Matthew chapter 12. Listen for God's word to speak to you. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for him or his companions to eat, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and yet are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today, beginning of Matthew chapter 12. So we've now shifted that broadly this section is kind of different responses to Jesus. So we've had sort of a selection. Chapter 11 was um, sparked off by John's disciples seeing kind of who Jesus is and then kind of dealing with other things. Now we're going to have a few encounters with the Pharisees, a reminder of who the Pharisees were at this time. Because again, sort of we in Christian thought, when we talk about the Pharisees, it's usually they're the bad guys, but um, (laughs) because they put themselves in opposition against Jesus. So that makes sense. But what actually they are is they're this sort of sect of Jewish folks who are not, in fact, connected to the priesthood. Those are mostly going to be the Sadducees or just priests, right? The Levites, that group. The Pharisees are those who are really concerned with uh, obeying the law that Moses gave for they themselves and also for those around them. They're really calling um, their fellow Jewish folks to really, really, really pay attention to the law. Broadly, it's sort of this concern that the um, the the fact that they have been under empire, they have most recently been under the occupation of the Roman Empire, is because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so God is not bringing uh, redemption. God is not giving um giving them victory, giving them their their national identity back, not being victorious for them because they're not on God's side. So they need to get on God's side. And so they are calling people to this. Part of this is that you have started to set up synagogues in various places, kind of places of worship all over instead of just the temple. 
where people can learn and, you know, learn how to read the scripture, learn how to, you know, to obey the law. And they really want to hold everybody up to that account. It is notable that this is sort of the sect. This is um, what grows into sort of rabbinic tradition. It's already beginning at this point and is continuing on in rabbinic tradition. And this is where we get sort of the, this is the surviving branch of Judaism and the surviving organization of Judaism is in synagogues, local rabbis, that sort of thing. Um, So Jesus and his disciples, they're walking through a field and the disciples are just grabbing a little bit of grain, right? It's a very simple thing. You know, you just kind of roll it and then you just pop it in your mouth. You could eat it. Well, technically, um, in sort of all of the extra writing that that the Pharisees specifically have kind of piled on to, to define exactly what is Sabbath, what is work, all those sorts of things, this falls under a category of doing work on the Sabbath. And they say, that's not something you're supposed to be doing. Hey, Y'all think that you're just super and great and holy and all of these things. And yet your disciples, Jesus, are doing what is not lawful. You are doing work on the Sabbath. You're not following the rules. And to a certain extent, and you know what? We as Presbyterians, we get that, right? You're not doing something decently and in order. You're not doing it the way you're supposed to do it. There's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things and you're doing it the wrong way. That's their focus. That's their um, expectation. So Jesus has some answers for them. First, he says, well, let's look at an example. How about David, the man after God's own heart? Have you not read that David, and this is when he's on the run sort of initially from Saul, He and his mighty men go and they go to the tabernacle. They go to the house of God and he asks for food and they go, all we've got is the bread. And David says, well, we're uh, kind of on a quest for God, right? We've, We've refrained from the things that we're not supposed to be doing. So, you know, maybe we could eat that bread. And he does. He and his companions. It's not lawful for him to do that. He, he was, you know, the, this bread is only for the priests. Uh, this bread is, you know, only for those who have set themselves apart. David says they did, but, you know, he's he's also obfuscating the truth quite a bit. And yet, it's okay. Because it's not just strict adherence to the law. It is something deeper and greater. And goes on to another example. Or have you not read the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple, they break Sabbath. They do things on the Sabbath and it's okay. They're guiltless. And then he says says something really inflammatory. He says something even greater than the temple is here. If you really knew what it means... I desire mercy over or and not sacrifice. I desire mercy instead of sacrifice. Then you would not have condemned the guiltless. If you really understood what was going on and and the things that are really important, this this is minor. This is nothing. The fact that these guys grabbed a little bit of grain, right? That's that's not that big of a deal. And then he says, the son of man, the human one, is Lord of the Sabbath, is ruler of the Sabbath, is in charge of the Sabbath. And in another gospel account, Jesus says that the Sabbath is made for humans, not the not humans for the Sabbath. It's a gift. It's a it's a generous offering of God's grace and a way to show that it's not about following all the right rules so that you get into heaven. Right? 
That's not what it's about. It's not following the rules because they're rules. It's following the rules because there's wisdom, there's Torah beyond those rules. And taking time in rest and reflection on God's goodness, those are both really, really good things. But not to the extent that you can't, like you just, everything shuts down. So Jesus is is really coming against the up against the the Pharisees and they're very 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 strict adherence to the law. And he's saying there's there's nuance here. This is not math, this is art. Um this is applied. This is situational. This has you know there there might be a a broad sense in which yes, yeah, you're supposed to be having rest on the Sabbath. But this particular case of my disciples walking through a grain field and plucking a little bit of grain for themselves doesn't fall under that. It, it It's not worth the reaction that you're giving me right now, popping out of a grain field and saying, oh, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um. Ultimately, this is a question of authority. Jesus is assuming for himself a authority beyond the law, beyond the temple, beyond the Pharisees. And that's not going to make them real happy. Spoiler alert, right? <laughs> but again, it's it's in enacting this, in talking about this, and in Matthew telling us this story, there's... There's some instruction. There's some Torah here. This is very similar to that sort of middle section of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, you have heard it said, blank, but I tell you, blank, right? He could have added, you may have heard it said, you should not do work on the Sabbath. I tell you, Sabbath is for rest. Sabbath is for connecting with the living God. It's not about following rules or not following rules, right? Um, what was that great story? I think uh, someone told it in something. There was a little girl who, you know, she was part of this old school family, right? And so they obeyed the Sabbath. If it was Sunday, you could not do anything. You couldn't run, you couldn't play, you couldn't, you just had to sit and sort of contemplate, which is great if you're 60 years old, not great if you're six years old, right? So she is just stirred up. She doesn't know what to do. And so she says, can I go walk to the gate and back? Sure, you can go do that, right? So she goes and walks to the gate and there, beyond the gate, there's a donkey. And the donkey is just sort of looking sorrowful, as donkeys often do. And she says, Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Donkey. Did you get religion too? You know, it's about... Oh, I remember Susan told me told us that, right? Um, that strict adherence to rules is not about abundant life that Jesus gives. So, how do we get caught up in this idea of, you know, following the rules? And I'm a firstborn. I like rules, you know. Um, there's some comfort in rules, but sometimes we, those rules get in the way. Sometimes we realize that God, in fact, does want mercy and not sacrifice, right? It's ultimately... There's deeper truth here. So where are those things where you have maybe some extra comfort in, in rule? And maybe you look down on others if they don't follow the same rule. Where do you need to flex a little bit? And live and, and, and enter into abundant life. Where does it need to be more relationship than it is religion? Take some time to reflect on that. 
And when you have, when you're ready, we will join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Whoops, wrong one. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We rejoice in your generous giving, goodness, O oh God, and celebrate your lavish gifts to us this day. For you have shown your love in giving Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Especially we thank you for the faith, life, and worship of the church. The sky above us and the water around us. People who have helped us this day. Occasions for our work to help others. Surprises that have blessed us. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for grace. For not being about just following all the rules about sacrifice. But it's about mercy. And love and grace. About deeper wisdom. Gracious God, we know you are close to all in need, and by our prayers for others, we come closer to you. We are bold to claim for others your promise of new life in Jesus Christ, as we claim them for ourselves. Especially we pray for the Roman Catholic Church. the victims of violence or warfare. Those who are hungry and thirsty. Those who share what they have with others. the healing of those who are sick. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Sam, who has a virus. For a member with some health concern. For Caleb, and family friend of Jacob's, who is recovering from hemo and bone marrow transplant. Continue prayers for Hector, Tony's father, who's having trouble adapting to his new home. For Michael, Cindy and Greg's grandson. Great God, you are one God, and you bring together what is scattered and then what is broken. Unite us with the scattered peoples of the earth that we may be one family of your children. Bind up all our wounds and heal us in spirit, that we may be renewed as disciples of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the God of peace sanctify us entirely, and may our spirits and souls and bodies be kept sound and blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. You can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and Substack. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, and our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.